Welcome, my name's Dr. Jason W. Morrison and I'm a theologist from New South Wales, Australia. Psychologists help people with themselves and other people and theologists help people with themselves and God. Yeah, James 1 and 13, probably one of the most controversial passages in the, in the Bible because it says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Well, that puts us in a very difficult position because what is evil? I'll tell you what evil is, quite simply. Anything that harms yourself or anybody else is evil, isn't it? If I come up and hit you in the head or poison you or smack you with a hammer or poke you in the eye, that is, that is evil. If I kill you, that's evil fulfilled. God isn't tempted by evil. If he chooses to do evil, he just does, as recorded in the Old Testament. And this is a, this is a line of thinking that we want to close our ears off to. It's not something we want to listen to. How could a God of love do harm? Well, it's something that we all, all of us need to come to a full understanding of. In part of God's nature, there obviously is a side of evil. Now this, this is, look, I know it's going to, I know it's, it's shaking a few of you up, but you've got to get through this to understand what happened at the cross. If there's a side to God that's evil and he allows it, which he does, right? And this could be very interesting to people that haven't had a fair go in life and have experienced a lot of evil. And it could even be uh, a help to those that have done evil. If God is a God of love, and he had before the cross a tendency towards evil for punishment in killing people, and there's lists and lists, I'm not going to go into them now, of many, many people that God annihilated and killed and punished and, and sent plagues upon. Um, that is a form of evil. That is evil. So God, in his nature, can do evil, but he's not tempted by it, which means it's part of his nature, according to James. You can't say... God hasn't got an evil side and fully know who God is because you'd be blindsided in trying to work out who he is. But I just want to close this evil side of God off with this because I know it's a very touchy subject and it undermines a lot of people's contemporary thinking on who he is. But your thinking, if you can't receive the fact that God has a side of e that's evil, based on the evidence, then your understanding of God, I'm sorry, is incomplete. All I want to say is this, and it's short and it's probably unfair, but it's the best way I can do it without going into hours of talks on it. When God became man, and this proves that it was God that became a man in, the, in our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus was God in the flesh. The Word became flesh. Why? Who put God on the cross? Man. Who punished God on the way to the cross? Man. Who made sure that God died? Man. Why? Because God himself at the cross, in our Lord Jesus Christ, was punished, and this is where the revelation opens right up, not so much for our sin, but for the evil he allowed. God took upon himself at the cross all the trouble of this world that he has allowed and took accountability of it himself. 
when he died. You see, if you're life, you have to find a way to death. God, as God himself, couldn't get to death. He had to become a man so that he could go into death, deal with everything in that realm, and then come out of death again as God in man. The only way God could find his way to death was be to become a man. I know that's short and sweet, but God has taken accountability at the cross as a man, came down as a man, to pay for his evil in front of us. We humiliated him, didn't we, at the cross. We killed him. So God has taken accountability as best as he could for the evil that he has allowed into the world. And I know evil's unfair and many of you are suffering from it right now. I'm not trying to justify any of it. All I'm trying to say is, and I've gone well over time, that God himself in Christ Jesus showed to us that he has taken accountability for the evil he has allowed. And on that controversial note, I'll close. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. Watch it on YouTube. Please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. Watch it on Facebook. Like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.